the adrenaline bit that gets everyone going, and, and it is so good. It's, it's terrific. We like doing it, but the fear or anything like that, that's the only fear. And I think if you're scared of it, if you're scared of being out there, well, you don't go. My, my couple of drivers have got no fear, that's a problem, I've got to hold them back a bit, otherwise they'll hurt themselves. They haven't got four wheels, they haven't got brakes, and I think if you talk to Kevin McCarroll out there on the water today in Chevy Chase when he come down front straight away and all of a sudden uh, it was in a roll, uh, and that is what gets my heart ticking. been racing for about 25 years and uh, I think this is about the 25th year that we've been at Yarrawonga and uh, back 25 years ago a lot of boats were built out of wood and uh, and the professionalism of the, the finish of the boats and things like that was basically a homemade situation where the guy built the boat himself and built it in the backyard and uh, had a boat builder build him a wooden hull or something like that. Today it's a lot more professional, everything's made out of fibreglass, the finish and the equipment that's available is far superior than what was uh, available back when I started and uh, today you can build a boat and you can walk around to uh, the right people like us or some other boat, uh, person that handles racing boats and you can buy all the correct fittings and you can fit the boat out and do a top professional finished job on a boat whereas 20 odd years ago it was uh, you know somebody down the road will make this part for you and make that part for you and you put the boat together but it was uh, nowhere near the finish and the performance of the boats today, the, the boat speeds, the, des the design in the hulls and everything is uh, a lot different than what we started with uh, 25 years ago. Yeah, I love it. It's, I've been doing it for a long time, my father did it and I'm fortunate, I've got my own race boat but I'm fortunate with Alan too. We're a team and I get to drive his and his I think is one of the best boats in the country, if not the best boat. We might prove that today. So we just we do our best, but it is a big rush and I love doing it. We run big horsepower engines and uh, we have a lot of uh, late model stuff now, but basically in the last 15 years there's not a lot changed in what we're doing. We're building bigger engines and getting more horsepower, but we've got better gear to use now. What sort of uh, speeds would you be doing in 4.2s now? Probably on an average around 80 mile per hour. And there's, you know, the top blokes doing say 84 and the bottom blokes doing sort of 77, you know, it's, it's very competitive. It's not, not quite quick enough for me, but you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll stay where I am. The, um, the basic engine we have here in our displacement boat, uh, which we run in the unlimited to class, is a fuel injected uh, supercharged 482 Chevrolet engine. Uh, first of all, this is a fuel injection system that sits on top of the engine which feeds the fuel into the engine. Uh, the supercharger is underneath that. Uh, that really puts, pumps the air in and the fuel in and that's what makes a lot of the horsepower in these types of boats. Uh, we run small stack exhaust on them so it makes the boat a lot more drivable than you would be able to with normal extractors on it. Uh, the engine probably, this engine in this boat is pumping out probably around 1600 brake horsepower. It runs through a 70% gearbox, 15 inch pitch prop and runs up around 8,000 revs. It's, it's very nerve wracking out there watching someone that you love running. I've, I've actually filmed Alan uh, crashing his boat so it is it's absolutely terrifying. But you, you never stop them from doing it because it's what they love so you just support them 100% and that's all you can do. You want them to win, but you don't want them to win at any cost. So you just you pat them on the back as they're going out and you say, you know, take it easy and you mean it. But you'd like them to win as well, so you share the joy and you share the sorrow if they, if they don't win, you know. It's just part of the deal, it's racing. As you go along and uh, 
you mature a bit in the way that you drive the boat. When you first drive, it was just a fierce attack and foot down all the way and don't back off and just hang on. But uh, today, with the speeds that we're going a lot faster and things like that, you think about it a little more. And when you see, you read the water a lot uh, better than you used to in those days. And the situations where you do back off today uh, and basically preserve yourself. But um, that comes from experience as well. When we leave the ramp, get pushed off, start up and we go out and I always do a lap of the course and have a look at the water, the water conditions on the corners and what it's going to be like on the entry of a corner because as last year I crashed in a corner uh, because of water conditions. So I always do a lap first, have a look, then we line up, get our pole positions and line up. We've got our eye on the pole button and everything and we're just waiting for the flag to drop. When the flag drops, it's, it's pay time. We're on and it's sort of... We're, it's the first man to the corner, and if you, you're the first to the corner, you're going to dominate the race. Normally you do. Mind you, these days the boats are so reliable and so fast, it's very hard. And one of the things we've got in the competition we've got with the people we race against, we all know each other, respect each other a lot, and know how each other drives. So we, we race very, very close, probably the closest racing you'd see anywhere in the world. And we respect that, so we know, and it's safe. We think it's safe, other people don't, but... That's us, so we just go going and, and do our best. But the main thing is all the time, you've got to read the water. It's a very dangerous sport which keeps a lot of people away. And uh, that's probably the main thing why there's not a lot of boats, particularly in Unlimited, it is dangerous. And uh, people don't want to put their lives on the line. How difficult is it talking drivers into competing? I mean, you've got drivers as old as in their 50s still driving. How, how do they tackle the danger, particularly for so many years? Well, they've grown up with the boats my driver, Bob Thurger, and um, Peter Smith, who drives other boats from Queensland, have been driving for 25 years, and they've just been doing it so long, they're so good. It's like everything practice makes perfect. The, the good uh, displacing boats will, build, will beat the average hydroplanes on the day. Uh, in rough water on, on long courses, the displacing boats get caught up in the rush water over four laps and that slows them up a bit. We reckon we're the best in unlimited displacement and they think they're the best. So is, is that a grudge match that you think uh, should be put to rest eventually? Well, there'll never ever be a sport unless there's a grudge. No one will want to beat anyone, will they? We're pretty proud of uh, to run a D12 gag. They seem a pretty reliable uh, motor, and um, we're pumping out to our 550, 580 horsepower, and we're sort of pretty happy to get that out of it. And then, with the reliability that it has got in it, um, we, you know, we're really happy. Here we go, flags dropped and it's KT11 shooting out in front. Have a look at its magic on the outside. The 4.2 litre, it's magic. Only producing around about 300 horsepower. Keeping KT11, the 600 horsepower tunnel hole on us as they go up to the top end boys for the first time. Just hold it. 
here in these spring floor safety cockpits is number one a removable steering wheel okay that helps when getting into the boat um, and it is also a safety factor if the boat does happen to have a uh, blowover which is the front of the boat gets to my flips over backwards now in the case of a blowover with these boats as you can see reinforced meaning they've got a uh, reinforced it's half an inch thick uh, so it's a fighter canopy out of the air aircraft fighters also the lid here, as you can see, if I close that, it will actually close. And it locks down in these positions here. Uh, to remove the lid, if I'm sitting in here or trapped, I have an inside lever here which I'll pull back and I can either kick up. If the boat does happen to be upside down and I may be in a uh, not too well state, we also have a trap door in the bottom of the boat or an escape hatch here. This has also a uh, cam release type to release it from underneath and I can kick the floor out. Or if I am in, as I previously mentioned, a not so well state, the diver can actually undo it from the outside and pull it straight out. Now once he leans inside this trapdoor here, he will undo that, pull it out. If the boat is upside down, he can lean in. I've got a central cam release mechanism seatbelt. Turn that and it falls apart. Okay, at this stage we've got the floor out and I'm sitting here. I also have an oxygen mask for this particular reason. It has an oxygen mask here and I've also got two foot of lead here. So as I said, I've still got the mask on at this stage straps are off, the dive will reach in and the bottom of my race suit here, specially designed race suit here, I have some little grab handles and he can actually pull me through the floor. What I've got behind me here is a data logger um, because when you're out there driving the boat, these boats you do not have a lot of time. The canopies don't give you a lot of vision. We've got some gauges here but because the vision is a little bit restricted, we tend to watch the water conditions more than anything else. The data logger we've got behind here measures, the, as you said previously, the engine. The oil pressure, the fuel pressure, the boost pressure and the actual temperature of the engine. We also have temperature on each individual nozzle and that monitors everything. We come back, we can record it back on our little computer and we can then read, do a printout and find out exactly how the engine's running. The engine that we have here is the Lycoming 255L7C. It's a military engine used in the Chinook helicopter principally. The operation is fairly simple. Air comes in, the air intake at the start, and goes through a series of seven axial compression stages. Um, each stage compresses the air further and further to the point that it's about 95 psi. Um, it goes into a cent centrifugal compressor and then goes into the combustor. Once it's in the combustor, um, fuel is injected and ignited and the hot air wanting to expand has to rush through a series of turbines. The first turbine that it goes through actually spins like a windmill and turns the compressor. After that it goes through another two, two turbines which drive this shaft here which, which drives a propeller. Exhaust temperatures in this engine are around about 800 degrees Celsius. That's at uh, this section here. The turbine inlet temperatures up here are much hotter. They're around 1100 degrees Celsius. So the metals up here have to be quite good to withstand the creep. Ready to go? <laughs> sorry, Brett, sorry. Thank you. 
doing us his dressing room. Yeah, not quite big enough for who I'd like to take with me. Fred, you. <laughs> Thanks, mate. the boat. One's a missile, one's fire. Make sure that I start the boat and I tend to prevent get back to the hundred. How long have you been racing Formula 1s? Uh, Formula 1 I've been doing for about 10 years now. So you've stuck with the outboards, why is that? Basically the weight, the whole, the whole boat, the whole rig only weighs 390 kilo, so it's not very heavy at all. It's power to weight ratio, got about 300 horsepower and it's all efficient horsepower too as well. The style of propellers that we use have got brakes on them and all sorts of things where the inboards are still running propellers that they owned 10 years ago. Are they an easier boat to, to drive? Um, I wouldn't say they're an easier, they're easily physically demanding boat to drive um, because you're seatbelted into the boat, there's no fighting the boat trying to stay into it, so obviously that's a lot easier. But uh, actually, concentration's much harder, I think, with one of these things because everything's such on the limit all the time, you've always got to run right on the edge. A lot of young blokes have tried to do or drive unlimited boats and they don't realise the dangers of them and they can come unstuck in a big way and there's usually only one accident. This is go! Oh, we've had an accident up the top end there! Oh, oh, Wilson! Now we've lost the... Well, you can just talk us through the accident last year and what, what went through your mind? Well, we were coming down the back straight. I was in front, there's 13 boats in the race. And when I got into the bottom turn near the bridge, it was very, very rough. And we came off the top of one and fell into a big hole and the boat just catapulted me out. And uh, I made a lot of speed leaving the boat. More speed probably than the back straightaway. But I think the scariest thing, or the biggest fear I have, like I went into the corner first and I knew there was 13 boats just getting when you're thrown out, he's being run over. And it, because I know those 13 other 12 boats have got to come around me, so when you, you come up to the surface, the first thing you're doing is looking for the boat you've just come out of so you can be near it, so, for the, so you know you're not going to be run over. Because what happens, I was probably 20 feet away from the boat or 15 feet just before it sunk, another boat came around. A guy that wasn't experienced and used me like a turn boy. Well, all the experienced guys, they just stop, they get away. They see the accident and they stop. But that's, you know, there's a couple of people that aren't experienced and you've got a problem. And that, that has always been my main fear, being run over. Come out, 
I was having a lot of trouble trying to breathe. Um, I'd impacted pretty hard on the steering wheel. Uh, as you'd see in the video, the boat's gone upside down and impacted. Um, speed probably somewhere between 100, 110 mile an hour. Uh, we're only just leading into the first lead in buoy. Um, I think because of that, it's um, when the boat's impacted, it's thrown me onto the steering wheel. Um, I busted um, three to four ribs down the right hand side. Um, went in onto my lungs. Fortunately, I didn't puncture any lungs. Um, I got water on the lungs through the water. My visor was cracked and just the impact of hitting the water. Um, but the crew that were there, we had a paramedic, so they did a terrific job. Um, it was only moments and we were on the stretcher and then uh, in the ambulance and then we were getting airlifted to the Alfred Hospital. So, um, yeah, it was, it was good and fortunately, well, as you can see, it's three weeks now and we're back driving a boat again. I think, you know, maybe fortunate than a few. My job is to rescue the driver. That's the sole important part of it. Rescue the driver, get him to the water line, get the first aid attendant onto him. Once that's completed and he's okay, then rescue the boat. What sort of chance have they got to survive? They've got a great chance of surviving, as long as they don't panic. That's why people that have a familiarity with diving will survive a lot better because they'll be in that situation, they'll hold it together, they'll know that the rescue diver is coming and that the assistance is only a bit around the corner. If they don't know what they're doing, then they'll consume the air a lot quicker that they've got in their boat. When the rescue driver comes, they'll panic and maybe both might drown. Water below here, go down half a metre and it's black. It is totally black. So picture yourself in a boat upside down on the bottom, wondering how do I get here? Because it happens in within 30 seconds, you're gone. So yeah, survival. Survival of the driver is the most essential part of it. And then we think about the boat later. Well, the safety has been dramatically improved by the, the reinforced cockpits, which we now use, which we are seat belted into. Um, in, like in the early 80s, there was, they lost like 12 Formula One drivers in the World Series in one year. And it was just horrific, so they had to try and do something, and that's when they introduced the reinforced cockpit. Since the introduction of the reinforced cockpit, we've only lost probably in the, in the worldwide in the last five years, I think they've lost about two or three drivers. Come on, Steve, get into it. Has have you ever tried to, to stop Steve from competing? No, never, no. No, actually, I encourage him to. It's a good sport, and uh, all right, I had a bit of bad luck, but uh, no, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. So, yes, I, I have no worries about that at all. No, he's out there doing his own thing, and uh, um, he's in charge of the boat, and uh, quite a capable driver, and so far he's never got himself into trouble, or even looks like getting into trouble, so no, I have no worries with that. I um, actually had a, a 1.6 hydroplane given to me when I was 17, and right from that time till now, Dad's just been 100% behind me. We ran that boat for a season and then um, built the, the boat we're currently running, and Dad had a lot of input into that. With the, the 1.6s, in any case, I don't think there's ever been a major accident or anyone that's never been seriously injured. But um, with a bit of luck, well, as today shown, I'm stepping up in the classes, so when you get to the faster boats, that's when the risks get a little higher. But you just try not to think of it.
John, there's a lot of history associated with powerboat racing, particularly the Griffith Cup. Just uh, how important is the history of the sport to the sport? Well, like any sport, the history is, is vital to keep the sport going. The Griffith Cup has been run in Australia in my uh, time, since 1963. And uh, I've missed the odd Griffith Cup, but uh, I feel that it is, it is very, very important to keep it up and keep it there in front of the whole sport. Dennis, a great performance over there in New Zealand by uh, yourself and uh, Ronnie Burton and the big uh, turbine uh, boat. Uh, have any problems uh, to the lead-up? Uh, yeah, we did actually. Uh, we had one that really worried the Christ out. Ron had a couple of props imported from the States, especially for the event. Uh, he'd been chasing them for a while and they came to fruition. And, uh, after three days of testing, we got the boat absolutely perfect for the Sunday about an hour before races. Unfortunately, uh, after they decided to x-ray the skid fin and the propeller, they found a crack in the propeller and that chucked everything into total oblivion, to be honest with you. So. Uh, a bit of a worry there for a, a small amount of time, but uh, we got the other prop on it and, well, history remains now and uh, we're fortunate enough to bring it back. So how does it feel, Ron, to defend it? Oh, pretty exciting, actually, but I was a bit disappointed to see more boats con uh, contest us. You know? It was sort of a harder job last year to win it, to bring it to Australia rather than uh, contest it within Australia, which is a bit, bit disappointing, actually. Warwick, uh, how good a feeling is it to beat the Aussies in the Griffith Cup? Oh yeah, it was pretty good at the time, it was uh, back in 93 and uh, we never had the turbine to contend with then, it was the, uh, the piston piston engine, but uh, yeah, no, we were quite happy at the time. How, how strong is the Aussie Kiwi rivalry in the Cup? Uh, well, it's been there for a long time, they've uh, fought backwards and forwards for, for a number of years, I think since about 1912, so uh, it always has been uh, pretty, pretty strongly contested. Well, it's a bit of a David and Goliath. You know, you've got a, a 26 foot boat against a 30 or 30 odd foot boat, um, probably 17 or 1800 horsepower compared to three, three and a half thousand horsepower. So just on a one to one, it would be on paper, it's just about impossible to beat it. It's, it's really only if they have a problem. Yeah, no problems. Uh, accelerating well. It got us a really good run down here and it just got away from me actually. I didn't think it'd accelerate that hard. Um, all pressure's terrific in the gearbox. Uh, nothing's tight. It's all free. Sounds good. Feels great. I think we should go back in again? I don't think you need to. No. We'll check the gearbox out. Too, all right. Let's go from there. No worries. Come down, and it's going to be back to back AC Rivers Cup 
wins. Aussie and Dabba. First over the line. I was here in 89, had a call and lost it. Well, I've got one home this time because it's all Aussie and Dabba, Dennis Parker, Ron Burton and Johnny Wellwood and the boys first. The uh, turbine... Well, we brought it back to New Zealand. We've defended it. We've got two in the bag. I suppose basically you, uh, you take each year as it comes and we certainly had our problems over this weekend. Uh, big gear box pulled down last night. I didn't think they were going to get back together, to be honest with you, but we nursed it through the first heat and we've kept it going. And credit to the crew and the people that come out to race against us. It's just great. The boat handled sweet, but I uh, couldn't really run it much above 160 mile an hour, so we were limited to where we were going. But uh, she did the job and she's come up trumps, and that's all that matters, I suppose. I think the rev heads, I think they like to see the big motors and the big uh, blower on top, the big cap as we call it, the hat, and uh, we like, they like to see a really exciting close racing and when they're close together and there's only probably a teleo uh, paper between them, it's absolutely awesome and sensational. Oh, I love it, yeah, I've been there for 10 or 12 years. I, I was car racing before I'd done this for 10 or 12 years, but um, there's nothing like these things, they're dangerous and they're exciting. What sort of an adrenaline rush is it? The greatest thing you could ever have. It's good.